what's up everybody? Enter Tournament of Champions Podcast. Alright. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, coming back to the show and listening to us. That's not that going to be that often that I use that, I promise. Uh, this is Enter Tournament of Champions Podcast. We are back to discuss a new topic this week. Uh, we're talking about sci-fi movies uh, where all three of us all three of us came up with our own separate top ten lists that we're going to reveal individually, uh, one by one. And uh, I'm Jeff speaking over here. I'm joined by JD. Hi. Yeah, whatever. And uh, you got fucking, <laughs> uh, you know, you got Kyle over there too. Uh, hi there. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this episode, like I said, it's just top tens and um, anything that I might, you know, if I have one at ten and one of you has it at five, we're gonna we're gonna do the push it. From uh, salt and pepper, and we're gonna push that exactly. We're gonna push that down to a little bit later in our list, so we can all talk about it at the same time instead of you know risking repeating ourselves or whatever. Um, so anyway, in this episode is brought to you by. No, I'm just kidding. We don't do that. Um, so this <laughs> in this episode, <laughs> uh, starting us off at number ten is JD. Ooh. Oh Ooh. man. Ooh. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Ooh. I don't know um, why I'm doing that. I'm sorry. I'm honored. Um, honored? Man, I, I'm honored. Honor boners going on. Honored right bonered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I struggled with this number 10 spot because as you were talking pre, uh, pre-recording, pre how many fucking great movies are there in this genre that you Too could many. easily justify being in a top 10? Yeah. Um, so I, I debated a lot, but I ended up putting Primer there. Mm. Um, that's... Um, it's one that I haven't seen in a long time, and I, I'm pretty sure I've only seen it twice. Um, but in and you doing, comprehended it okay? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that. Um, that's that's a fucking mind fuck of a movie. <laughs> it's... Um, but I mean, the the fact that it did it it did so much of that that mind fucking, and I'm assuming that I mean was that an indie film? Yeah, I don't so, think that dude, was like seven thousand dollar budget. budget. Yes, absolutely, Jesus it's an indie Christ. film. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's just impressive all the way around. Yeah, uh, and, and I think I'm going to watch that tonight, actually, because that's that's the most excited I am of all the movies on this list. To oh, watch nice! Again. They filmed it here in Dallas. Um, um, and, really? Yeah, they did. And the seven thousand dollars skeleton crew of five people: uh, Shane Carruth directed, wrote, starred in it, produced it. He did everything, and they debuted at Sundance awesome. in 2004. <laughs> Um, it gained a cult following, obviously, because, you know, it's a really complex movie about time travel. Uh, yeah. It's like one of the most complex movies on time travel, like the science behind it. You know, it adds, yeah. it focuses on the science part of the sci-fi um, instead of it just being like, well, time travel's fucking stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. well, let's yeah. do whatever. How zany is this device that we just got? <laughs> right? Don't step on any butterflies, bro. And after you watch it, there's a really, really helpful diagram on Wikipedia that really helped me comprehend this movie because it is crazy. Didn't make my 10. I love the movie. If yeah, this didn't make my 10, imagine really, what my 10 is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you really beat the drum for this movie for like the yeah, last two years. Yeah, this fucking so amazing. Make your 10, yeah, it's great. I have no idea what to expect, though. So. Uh, but it's great, though, because, yeah, they have this diagram of, like, how they uh, time-traveled and which versions of themselves are interacting with characters at certain points in the movie because they don't really ex- fully explain it to you. There's a lot of talking in this movie, man. You really have to pay attention. Um, cool. Can't wait to re-watch oh, it. oh boy. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch it. Is it, uh, <laughs> is it still on Netflix? That's where I think I watched. I, yeah, it. Yeah, that's where I watched it time. the first few times. It's a movie that's like 70 minutes. So like, if you finish it, it's like, well, let's just fucking start it back up again. Because yeah. <laughs> wow, that's such a complex movie and so long. Wow, yeah, so short. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not on Netflix anymore. God damn it. <clears throat> oh man, it was for a long time. Like even Shane Carew's other movie, Upstream Dude, Color. That thing is on Netflix anymore. <laughs> I know it's all leaving. It's fucking bullshit. Uh, next up is Kyle. Oh, Kyle, hello. I had a lot of problems with my 10 spot, man. Uh, I could have put so many things there, um, you know, uh, putting something super iconic there, putting something that maybe needed a little more love, putting something that I personally loved, yeah. uh, and I ended up with Predestination. Oh, nice. Uh, it's a newer sci-fi movie that I, I've really enjoyed, and I remember when you and I saw this movie, Jeff, not together, but just in general, Yeah. Uh, we talked about this movie for months. I mean, yes. Just like just lingering and lingering and lingering in the back of my head for the longest time. Um, so why I may have bumped something more iconic, which I won't spoil just because I think everyone's going to be expecting, 
you know, certain movies to be on our list, and I want I want them to be very upset by the time the lists are over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by surprise, uh, I ended up with Predestination. I just think it's a really smart movie. I think it's very incredible. I think Ethan Hawke is awesome. Yeah, this director great. is not the greatest in the world. I think it's the same guy who did, like, uh, shit shitty vampire or something. Movie. Yeah, yeah, a really shitty vampire movie that should have been the straight title. to sci-fi. <laughs> Uh, and like this movie's really fucking good and incredibly smart. And what happened to that girl that we said was going to have an amazing career after that movie? Yeah, Sarah uh, Snook. Uh, she yeah. plays both like a dude and a woman. Um, yeah. Or at least she's going. She's undergoing gender reassignment. Yeah. Um, and living as a, living as a man basically. But yeah, it's her performance is goddamn incredible. Yeah, and there's yeah should, even on Wikipedia be, again. There's a long ass timeline of things because it's a it's a crazy ass time time travel movie. It is, yeah. It's very complex. Like it's another yeah. really just complex movie where you're just like really racking your brain over just wait, is this a plot hole? No, it's not because this is happening. Oh, and you're just like, oh, it's really 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 good. A movie yeah. that can make me think about it for so long past its uh, credits rolling. You know, get those are the movies that stick with me. Oh my this god, movie really stuck. Yeah, same here. These directors did Daybreakers. That was the shitty. Daybreakers. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yep. Ethan Hawke did sci-fi. that one too, huh? Yep. Huh. yep. Yeah. And they're doing cool. the shitty Jigsaw movie coming out. Cool. Good for yeah. Jigsaw. Uh, so that goes to my number ten. Uh, this is this is another. <laughs> it's another. We all chose mindfuck movies as number ten. Uh, my number ten is Coherence. <laughs> oh. Uh, this is a this is another indie movie. It's not nearly as small budget as Primer is, where it's it's literally like. Shane Cruz wallet, and that's all that paid for that movie. <laughs> um, it, Coherence is a uh, it's fifty thousand, so it's, it's still a small budget, but it like takes place in the, during a dinner party, and as there's a comet going overhead, basically, and passing them, it creates like a uh, it creates a, a, like some type of rift in their reality to where it creates other realities. It's an alternate reality movie, so I mean, there's a lot. It's fucking confusing. It's so good though. <laughs> Good. It's because cool. you're like at certain point, like there's, there's like several houses, like any every house that they see outside their window is the same exact house with the same exact people in it, just in an alternate reality, and they end up like mixing houses accidentally at certain points, so you don't know which person's from which reality and stuff, and uh, they're trying to figure hmm. it out. Um, yeah, and these people in alternate realities had different interactions, they had different arguments, so like somebody feels a different way towards somebody in a different reality where, and then if they go to another house, they resent somebody for no reason in particular, because it didn't happen in that reality. Um, it's fucking bananas. Like, and it's another one where like, like primer, a lot of it's in the dialogue. You know, you have to listen to what they're talking about and they keep dropping clues about a follow, uh, about a comet that they, uh, they saw or whatever. And that clearly has to do with triggering this event. Cause once it goes overhead, it, the reality, the loops close, or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so good, though, dude. It's good. I watched it on Amazon at first. I don't, I don't know if these movies are fucking anywhere anymore. Uh, it's good, though. I really want to rewatch it. It's another short one, too. It's 80 minutes. Cool. 80 minutes, that one. Uh, so, JD, what's I hope, your... I hope some of these movies are available. Like, uh, dude, y'all me are too. Freaking, y'all are freaking me out here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JD, what's your number nine? <clears throat> um, number I nine? went with... An... I went with uh, Inception as more number nine. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna push that real hard. Oh, Ooh. do we have to push it? Okay. Yeah. Pushing it real good. By the way, I just want to say Primer, Predestination, Inception, all honorable mentions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> None of these are in my ten. People are gonna lose their shit. All right. So I'm losing uh, my shit quietly inside <laughs> about Inception, but that's okay. I'll, I'm be very quiet about it. Kyle, what is your number nine? Uh, my number nine is a little Joss Whedon romp called Serenity. Never heard of it. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I really like this movie quite a bit. Love Firefly. Love this movie. Uh, I think this movie stands on its own also because I know a lot of people whose entry into the series was this movie. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, there's a TV show? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's really good. A lot of really yeah. mem- memorable moments. Really memorable bad guy. Super memorable bad guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Nathan is the most streaming man on the face of the planet. So Absolutely. Uh, what more do you want me to say about this movie? It's just a fucking fun ride. And it's kind of, you know, there's, uh, again, like, you're you're going to feel that full Joss Whedon spectrum of emotion, which is something we say a lot on this podcast, sans Joss Whedon. Uh, but you feel this full, full spectrum of emotion in this movie. Like, there's a lot yeah. going on. There's some deaths. There's some happiness. There's a lot of laughs. Uh, and just a lot of cheekiness from that billion. So, yeah, just really like this movie quite a bit. It's good, cool. man. It's really good. 
Uh, oh, I'm fucking next. I was about to say JD again, and I was like, wait, I didn't talk about my nine yet. My number <laughs> nine is uh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Eh, Great. Eh, eh. That's good. <laughs> well, but hold on. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going next, though, right? Because it's my number. Yeah, eight. you're going next. Slight push. So we can talk about it now. Oh, okay. So it's your number eight. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, um, man. Dude, this movie is. <sighs> this movie, uh, like, uh, I love oh my it God. so much. I love like, it, it so it, much. It, it hurts so that I love it so much because I wonder what I would do if I if that technology were real. Like, yes. I really do wonder that. I would erase this memory so quick. Uh, uh, I'm so quick. But uh, at what then, cost? I know. I don't care the cost. <laughs> uh, oh, so quick. There's so many memories. Get them out of there. Um, uh, you know, I'm so glad y'all both brought this movie up because this is a movie I've only seen one time in high school. Very, very dire need of rewatching this movie. Yes, uh, definitely. It's been brought up on our podcast multiple times about how much we like this movie. Uh, yeah. So that kind of goes to show just how much of an impact it makes, even just on a one-time view. It's very, it's a movie I think about often, you know. And it's dude, uh, it's I'm very fucking... excited to get more of a uh, current picture of it because I have at this point yeah. like a couple shadow memories of that movie. So the fucking uh, Charlie Kaufman, dude. Nobody writes movies like this guy. He did Being John Malkovich and mm, great. Adaptation. Mm-hmm. Like- uh, Synecdoche, New York, which might be another sci-fi. I don't know. That's not really sci-fi though. It's kind of a fucking. It's oh, just a weird movie. Um, <laughs> Eternal Sunshine though is is very. Uh, I think the coolest part about the sci-fi in this movie, the the fi rare like doesn't really exist that much. I mean, this world is our world. They just it just happens to have this technology in it that yeah. can erase memories if need be. And the way how thought out the company operates from a script writing level like is insane like you know they they write notes to people's uh people that want their mind wiped they like like write notes to friends or whatever and basically say don't mention such and such to this person because they're having their memory erased of that Hmm. specific memory or whatever um i I, god it's everything so thought out and i love this is like probably this could be another topic we could do this is one of the best movies to occur in somebody's head in my opinion like because oh, every, yeah. everything you see in his head isn't isn't something that's not it, it's not some bullshit thing just to be artsy. It's it's something that uh, it's a memory that we're actually seeing for the first time as an audience, but it's disappearing. It's it's you know it's right. it's going away from his head. They're deleting it basically. Right, right. Um, it's so good though, man. It's such a relatable story. I, I can rewatch it all the time, and it has I, like just what I almost cried at the word okay. Because it, at the end of the movie, these two meet up anyway because they that's what that's what people do when they are fucking like attracted to each other. They see each other again, even if you erase your memories of them, you're going to see each other again and just have an immediate connection. The same spark, yeah. Right, exactly. exactly. And then when they get like proof that they erased each other from each other's memories, like uh, she's like, you know, I'm going to drive you crazy, and you're going to resent me, and he just goes, okay. And that was, and then they just start laughing, and I was like, "God damn it, this movie's gonna make me cry." It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just so great. There's so much like there that's not said, that just I don't know. It just really clicks, man. Just fucking just go all out. Make the same mistakes. Um, yeah. Learn that lesson. You know, don't just run from it. Uh, it's such a good movie, dude. Anyway, uh, JD, it's your number eight, though. Yeah. Um. This this one, I mean. I, I didn't watch it when it first came out. I think I Me watched neither. it yeah. several years after it first came out. And um, I don't know. It, it was it was weird for me seeing Jim Carrey in a more dramatic role. Yeah. Um, He's super subdued for, in this movie. For sure. But it, it works. Like, I, I really don't think that you could have put many other actors in that role and had it be believable because he just he fits that character so well. He does. Um, yeah. And, and Kate Winslet with blue hair is looking pretty good, too. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. the OG. Uh, I, I it's a, what it I feels like is she's the OG. Uh, she's like the OG. Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Ramona Flowers a little bit. Oh, Ramona yeah. Flowers. Oh, yeah. She no, changes no. her hair the entire movie. Like totally. That's she's a yeah. free spirit, quote unquote, and uh, she's great. She's great. Yeah, yeah she's great. And she's even really even the uh, the peripheral roles. It's what Elijah Wood and Kirsten Dunst. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, just a, a really, really great cast. And, um, yeah, if you don't, if you don't feel anything after watching this movie, I question the existence of it. You're soul. empty inside. Yeah. yeah, totally. You've deleted all your memories already. Sorry. Right. 
You're me because um, I would yeah. delete all my memories. 100%. <laughs> I hope you. Uh, I, I hope you get uh, more out of it out of after a recent rewatch. I will. I yeah, think dude, it's you're gonna get so much out of it. That thirty-year-old Kyle is gonna like way more than twenty-year-old Kyle did. For I, sure. It's it's been at least probably three or four years for me, so I can't wait to it's, rewatch it's probably it too. Ten or eleven, like that movie came out when we were in high school. I think. Yeah, it did. Two thousand four. Mm-hmm. Two thousand four. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. I saw it in two thousand five, probably. So, yeah. like when it was on DVD or on MTV or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I hear you, uh, Kyle. What's your number eight? Did we do his number nine? His number eight, JD's number eight. That is was Eternal my number Sunshine. eight. Oh, okay. Uh, did we ever get JD's number nine though? Yeah, Inception. Yeah, it was Inception. You pushed it. Oh, I did push Bwah. it. You're so right. Okay, I'm I'm <laughs> lost. I'm lost over here. I'm in the weeds. Um, let's see. My number eight is X Machinia. Oh my X, god. X, we are pushing uh, that shit. Jesus Christ. Good. I'm glad. Same, same I'm glad, I'm glad it's being pushed. Yeah. It is pronounced Machina. You are correct, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does that lead us to somebody? I don't know anymore. I think it's your your number. Uh... Oh, my number eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. My number eight's a recent one. Yay, recent ones. It's a rival. Oh, oh cool. No? Cool. Nobody yeah. even... All right. Man, I, guys. I, 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 want, I wanted to. That was one I, of those uh, I love that movie. For the I love that spot. movie super hard. Not making my ten. <laughs> <laughs> love it so much. Not my ten. <laughs> So, like one of the smartest movies in the last like seriously I'm like I, I could yeah. heat praise on that movie all day because we have and we did yeah, uh, we sure God, did. yeah but it was it was going up against a lot of classics which that's what it, that's what's hard about new movies how do you how do you know how you feel about it if it's only been out like six months you, right. know? True. <laughs> you know like True. you're 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 like judging it against like year movies that you've loved for 10 20 right. years like, you know against you know a movie that you've known for six months so. right that's that's or the only an established reason. legacy or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, it's thank just, you. That's that's the short term I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, I'm more or less. It's about movies that stick with me after I see them, like long after I see them. <coughs> and Arrival, I just rewatched it last night. By the way, Arrival <laughs> has stuck with me since I the first time I saw it, and yeah. uh, how like it's just one of the most relevant. This is what sci-fi can do. I swear to God, it's crazy. Uh, it's just one of the most relevant movies ever made, even though it's like the least plausible situation of our lifetime. Uh, I mean. That's just me being pessimistic, I guess. Um, yeah. We're not going to see those fucking aliens. <laughs> <laughs> no. They're going to be like, who's their president? No, let's fucking get out of here. Uh, <laughs> is that a reality star? Like, let's, get, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, anyway, um, anyway, uh, sorry for getting political. Anyway, uh, anyway, 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 anyway. So Arrival, <laughs> the focus on language was not something I went into the movie really expecting. Like I knew it was kind of like uh, from the trailers, you kind of figure that aliens arrive and you're just trying to figure out their motives. But it had so much to do with like the the nuance and stuff in language and how we talk to each other and how we perceive how we talk to each other where, you know, yeah. the aliens say give weapon and... Uh, the the military's flipping out. Fucking what is what is that? Give weapon. What is that? What is that? And, mean? and she's like, to them that could mean tool. I mean, it could be another word, much like right. Other languages have uh, derivations of words where it could mean something else entirely. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's a really cool aspect of it. Uh, the ending gets so much emotion out of me, and I don't know why. I, I don't know. I think there's something just super poetic about like knowing every step of your future. Uh, whether it's in bits and pieces or not, just you know how things are going to end for you and especially your child. And you, insi- like, for the betterment of the world, I guess, entirely, you insist on going through that heartache anyway. Um, and the song that plays over that montage at the end and at the beginning just kills me, man. The fucking song is just yeah. beautiful. Um, I cried. But yeah, I exactly. Cried. Yeah, I did fucking too. Like it's just chills, I, I, crying. I cry at everything, but I really cried at that. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking. It's hard to take. And uh, I mean, you. It's not. It's everything that I love about the movies. Everything that's like kind of not said in in that. Yeah. Like uh, they, the reason that she ends up keeping her or having her kid is like when she tell, tells her kid, um, when she's at a very young age, so her kid's not gonna remember it. When she's like, you're gonna do so many great things in life. You're gonna you're gonna swim and do this and that because she knows all these things are true. And what if she deprived the world of the, of this person? Like, what what type of butterfly effect is that gonna set off? You know, like yeah, what else is what's it gonna ruin basically? So she feels like she has to go through with it. 
um, in, for the better man of the world, basically. Game, yeah. yeah. She doesn't want to break anything in a pattern or whatever. Um, but even then, I'm still questioning, like, what, it's kind of like a chicken or the egg scenario. What came first? Did she already decide this? Is the future that she's seeing is already decided. Like, she's made these decisions. She can see her kid. She's going to do this anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I just find that very fascinating, too. Like, because I'm always debating this movie, like, internally. <laughs> like, yeah. It's that movie that I catch myself the most recommending to people. Yeah. Like, oh, what movie should I watch? You see Arrival yet? No, that one. That, there you go. <laughs> Boom, it arrived. You know, like that's that's <laughs> it's seriously it's the one that like uh, in my mind most recently that I've I've been recommending yeah. a lot all year. You know, ever since it's come out. I love hearing that. That's awesome. Uh, J to the Dizzle. Uh, what's your number seven? Yo, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if we're pushing this one or not, but it's uh it's an old Tom Cruise classic, Minority Report. Yeah, we're pushing that. Okay. God, guys, y'all are giving me. You guys are giving me Sweet. so much homework. I hate it. Um, you've, you've never seen Minority Report? I got to be honest, and I know you're gonna hate me. It never wow. fucking seemed interesting to me. It just never. It never wow. appealed. You know. But Man. I guess we're gonna find out if I like it or not in two this short weeks. Me. This kills me. I mean, you can. I'm sure you can find things to pick apart in it. It's been oh, a while since sure. I watched it. Maybe but, I don't uh, know. Like, I'm not gonna go into it. With that mentality, yeah. uh, but uh, I've definitely have had zero interest in my entire life to see this movie. So, man, that's y'all crazy. are definitely forcing my hand. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. It's pretty crazy. Man, that's a it's, it's a great a Philip movie. K. We'll Dick talk, story too. Talk about it later. And I love Philip K. Dick. Like everything that this movie probably stands for are things that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. I just, man, I just, I don't know. You love Dick. Uh, so I love, <laughs> dude, I love some, some F dick, you know, <laughs> full dick. Uh, so, uh, Kyle, what is your number seven? Um, I have to pull up my list. I'm sorry. Well, unbelievable. We might, we might be pushing this interstellar. Yeah, we're pushing. Oh yeah. 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 Pushing it through a warm hole. Good, good, good. Uh, <laughs> warm I don't know how yeah, these things hole. are so high with, with the things that I know that y'all, I don't know. I'm, I can't, I'm excited to see how y'all this shake out. Cause I'm like, these movies, I, I feel bad for being so low on my list. X Machina and their cellar, but yeah. like the movies that are ahead of it are like no doubt of me. So I don't know. We'll yeah. See. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're splitting hairs. This genre is so ripe. I mean, God, that's true. This no, this could be one where a lower dirt. seed actually pushes through and, and, and wins. Maybe. I think Maybe. so. Too. Could probably, be, yeah, this is going to be such a good bracket. Holy I think, shit. But it'll be the, it, I think it'll be the best debating from top to bottom. Like, 1 versus 16 is not going to be a throwaway. I no, I don't think so either. No, There's I don't think, no so. I don't think so either. Way. Yeah, I think this, this is going to be a rough one. Yeah, this is going to uh-huh. be super rough. See, let's talk about how low this movie is, even though it's amazing. Number 7 for me is probably a push. It's her. Yeah, push that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hold on. Y'all cut out. Are there. you I kidding me? You. Uh, he said her, and I got very upset because we're pushing that. <laughs> Unbelievable! What's <laughs> everybody's cues being okay. solid? We're off our game. I, I don't. I don't like it. No, I couldn't. I couldn't hear any of that. Like all I got was. Yeah, you're you're but, cutting out for me just a little bit before this, but as long as maybe maybe my cell phone signal. It might be. I'm holding up my cell phone right next to my microphone, too, so I'm thinking that's probably not helping. <laughs> oh, weird. Yeah, I'll keep it away. He might be dropping. I don't know. Hello? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're here. Damn. I don't know. Are you cutting, are you cutting out bad? Are we cutting well, out bad? I, I think it's me, because I, I tried to get off Wi-Fi, and that didn't work out very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what, what did you pick? I didn't even hear what you picked. Her. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, my biggest homework assignment for this Yay. for sure, and y'all's two tens. So excited yeah. for you to see that movie! Holy shit! Uh, so you're number seven. Oh, it's number six, JD. Uh, hold on, let me get back to my list. Okay. Um, oh, I have uh, Blade Runner is my number six. Oh. God, push that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's um, you know. I, I just saw the final cut for the first time like two weeks ago. Wow. And I feel like oh, that's, wow. that's, so the, de- that's the definitive six. version. Yeah. That's I awesome. Agree. That is a definitive yeah. version. Uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to get stuck with that theater. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Kyle, no. JD first asked me, like, uh, uh, do I watch the theatrical and then the final cut? Yeah, don't watch the theatrical. <laughs> but just skip that. Fucking <laughs> just skip that, yeah, shut that, that shit down. It's that just Harrison it. Ford yeah. going, you want me to just read this? Just read it. Okay, I'm gonna read it and just reads whatever the fuck he's. Uh, 
And that's when I knew that the replicants were here on Earth. Oh, you know, oh, it's so bad. So how how prevalent are those uh, voiceovers? Are they throughout the entire film or in like the just entire film? Oh, cool. oh god, yeah. awesome! It's just layered on there the entire. It's really it, bad. It, it annoys me in principle because the final cut is so good. Like yeah. I don't know why well, anybody and, would have done that. And it like spells out a lot of things that are supposed to not be spelled out. And I'm like, God, this movie is just like. And I saw the director's cut first, so going back to the theatrical cut, I was like, that is, Why does this even exist? You know? Right. Like, <laughs> they should just burn every copy of this. Uh, it's yeah. not like anybody. It's not like the Star Wars original edition. No one longs to see the original edition of. A Blade Runner, like we could just put those in a landfill, ET style, and just bury them. Yeah, so. I haven't talked totally. to any like one person that's super like sad about the theatrical not being looked at as fondly or whatever. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone has that stance. And if you do, step forward. Right. <laughs> so we can uh, proceed to punch you in the face repeatedly. Um, Study you, <laughs> punch you. <laughs> Number six for Kyle. Uh, I know it's gonna get pushed. Two thousand one, a space odyssey. What the fuck? Yeah, is, why is this shit? Yeah, I know, so I know, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> fine. I feel, I feel really bad about that it's one. Fine. So. I feel bad about this one because I think we've swapped our one and six. My number six is Blade Runner. God <laughs> damn. <it. laughs> That's funny. Oh my god! All right, so JD, what's your number five, dude? This push is that, just fucking push that out of a plane. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, push a palooza is what I'm calling it because my push number five is 2001. All right. Oh man! Yeah. All right, <laughs> whatever. That's fine. Jesus. Christ. <laughs> it's a quintessential. Never mind. We're not gonna talk about it. All right, so I know, dude. I know. You don't have to. Yeah. So Kyle, I, that's for the hey, tournament. I, I, I put it above Interstellar, and that should make people happy. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> oh goddamn, JD didn't. There'd be no, no. goddamn Interstellar without 2001. You piece of you piece of shit. I know. I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to hear that. So I, I didn't want to put it above. I'm like, I don't even want to hear this. Movie, so. <laughs> um. So Kyle, what's your number five? Uh, we pushed it earlier, so we don't have to push it now. It's her. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Her. I assume it's Jamie's uh, number one, so... It is my number no, one, I'm that kidding. movie I've never seen and have admitted. <laughs> I just really want to yeah, see it. It's like it. I just, yeah, it's just, it's just so exciting. I just know I'm going to love it. Jeff, you watched this movie really recently. Oh, yeah. I watched it last night. Uh, this movie wrecks me. Yes. <laughs> this movie chews me up into like a little ball and spits me out and just goes there. That's what love is. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> um uh movie is so moving in every way and there is so much world building in this movie yeah even the job that he works for is not of this world <laughs> yeah i know he writes like cards for other people that can't write for themselves you know right like i mean, I, I don't even understand the complexities of, of what he does but you know like it's uh it's just a weird movie which just like so like there's no denim like people in in the future don't wear right. jeans yeah you know? like you know like stuff like that there's no cars like every scene that you see yeah he's walking every, all the time walking. yeah yeah it's walking they're walking on uh, above like passageways like or bridges or whatever you know maybe there's cars that are neat there but like you never see cars in this movie it's just there's a lot of really cool world building in this movie and Chris Pratt's in it for whatever reason <laughs> yeah I know right yeah. and Olivia <laughs> Wilde for two seconds oh whole seconds yeah um. Good for her. <laughs> anyway, just, just her whole existence. Good for her. Um, yeah, I really love this movie, man. And it's and uh, ScarJo uh, robbed. She was robbed. Yeah, hundred percent robbed. So you were saying that because there's no voiceover category for yeah. best actor, she actress. Well, she, can't win, she can't win best actress. She's not there. So you know. Yeah. She only yeah, did half the shame. work or whatever. I'm sure that's the mentality that exists. But yeah, and then people like to point out, well, she wasn't even the person that Walking Phoenix was acting off of. I'm like, oh, just fuck that. That makes it more interesting to me. <laughs> it does, yeah, that, yeah. Means, that she I mean, was to able me, to get yeah, that's that a better accomplishment in a vacuum. You know, without uh, you're wrong. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> Enjoy being wrong. Uh, and yeah. uh, Arcade Fire, great fucking soundtrack for this movie. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that was them because I never yeah, listened totally to them. them. Yeah, the good stuff. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, I don't really like that indie rock type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, I like that. It band, was perfect so, for this, like totally. And like when they're singing a song to each other, it's uh, everything about it is just so damn sweet. It's like the sweetest love story ever, uh, yeah, or it, romance it, it, ever. Crush, point crush you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and not it's to not spoil even like, anything, but it's 
it's a real love story. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like some like, you know, and they live happily ever after, you know, like this is that's real stuff. Like uh, after the sunset, before the sunset type of stuff where like, uh, you know, those lovers, they're on borrowed time or whatever. They're only in each other's presence for, you know, that little bit of time. And uh, it just makes it that much more special and potent and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, this movie is very much a reflection of that type of love story, a real love story, as I like to call it, right. not one where fantasy love story <laughs> yeah yeah it's got one where the real ending uh yeah it feels yeah. authentic especially to the the world that uh spike yeah. jones ends up building for everybody in it um oh and the video with game the technology this? oh I, my yeah. god oh my god the video game i want that video game so bad me too Ugh. <laughs> it's like the yeah. fucking fuckhead or whatever yeah, it's so ridiculous yeah. <laughs> it's so good uh jd you're gonna love this movie dude it's on uh cool HBO i can't wait is where i watched it uh oh yesterday. okay sweet yeah, dude, it's so oh, good. Get on that. And the dialogue's great. And oh, dialogue is so good. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson, good luck not picturing her, like, doing, like, the movements and stuff as she's talking because she emotes yeah. so much through her voice. Oh um, but not God. to the point where it's like, oh, she's clearly acting. Like, it feels she's like most, she feels like a real person. It's she's crazy. She's the realest character in the entire movie, yeah. and she has no body. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. Cool. Cool. Oh man, I'm excited, man. I've, I've needed an excuse and a push to. Oh, can I to say one more that. thing? Uh, it was me and five of my dude friends seeing this movie. These are like my drinking dude friends, not my like we feel good and we talk about our mo- emotions. <laughs> All five of us are crying by the end of this movie. Wow. A row of Jesus. Rows crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. Why did you take me to this movie? I'm so sorry. You know, like, <laughs> That's it, awesome. was, it was good. Yeah, it was good. That good. <laughs> Jesus. Sweet. Uh, so my number five could be a push because JD hasn't mentioned it yet. It's uh, it's Murph Interstellar, Murph. Oh yeah, we're pushing that. We're pushing that wormhole yeah. again. I'm so glad. I'm so yeah. glad it's so high. Yeah. So glad. I've watched it like way too. <laughs> I want to watch it. This is a movie that I want to watch right now. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, trailing behind Dark Knight and uh, Prestige, it's the third Nolan movie I've seen the most. And in recent memory, it's the movie I've watched the most out of most recent movies. Like wow. you know, like even her, I've yeah, seen yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. twice, maybe two times. Mad Max, I've seen two or three times. Yeah. I've seen probably Inception like six or seven times now. Yeah, you know, it's a movie I, I watch often. Uh, wait, where are we? Number four with JD then. Oh, uh, that's my uh, ex uh, ex machina. Oh, is Jesus. my numero quattro. Uh, we're pushing a little bit, yeah. Good. A little bit, a little bit of a push. Little, <laughs> little bit. Get up on this. Is there is a little push? A little push, Marf. <laughs> Marf, put push a little bit, Marf. Our, Don't let me look leave. Our place in the stars. Now we're sitting here wondering about our place in the dirt. Uh, in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> in the dirt. Uh, Kyle, what's your number four? Uh, so, just fun fact, my number four is actually literally not the same order, but the same four movies and my top four favorite movies of all time. So wow. I like mm. sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my number four is Inception. Oh, wow. Okay. The oh, nice, reason, nice, nice. Low, or that low to me, I know it's not low to you guys, uh, that low to me is because I find the other movies more sci-fi-y. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That's why it's an honorable uh, mention just, for me, yeah, because it's... Uh, it is a, it, it's a crime yeah. thriller heist movie. It's more of a I, you would call it that yeah. absolutely, but it does take place in people's minds. Yeah, it's and a sci-fi I movie. Really yeah. like I really like your idea of doing a podcast or a list about movies that take place in the minds of others. That's, oh, that would be so I fucking cool. I think we're gonna find that more movies exist than we can think of off the top of our heads right yeah. now. Three of them probably yeah. in this topic. Yeah, like I right. would even count totally. the Matrix in there. Yeah, like because some of it does uh, occur in the mind. Technically, technically, yeah, <laughs> I would say it does absolutely. That it's all in the you know, it's it's a simulation that's broadcasted through your mind. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Inception, man, uh, this really smart movie. And uh, talk about uh, genre bending. You know, it is a crime thriller, or not thriller. I'm sorry, it is a crime like you know a heist movie. You know, uh, you're getting that like almost like. Nolan's version of a couple <laughs> seven type of movie as well. Um, you know, uh, you're just you're getting that like kind of gadgety, you know, thriller, if you will, where they're trying to get the bad guy and plan information and all that stuff. Uh, great fucking soundtrack. Um, oh my god, are you serious? Yes, everything is going for this movie. Like, there's so many things going for this movie, uh, and um, it's a movie that I think benefits from the expositionary style storytelling method. You know that people hate so much. Yeah, uh, because yeah. there is so much, there is so much to explain. Yeah, to I was explain. gonna say there's too much to explain to just leave it like as yeah. is. 
Right. Yeah. And it's always interesting. Like, I I love the scenes where DiCaprio is talking to Ellen, uh, Ellen at Paige about, you know, um, just how things work. You know, this is this, and this is that, and this is going to be your role and everything like that. Uh, and I love the allegory of what the, all the characters stand for in terms of, like, movie production and stuff like that. Have you have y'all seen that? No, I haven't. I wouldn't be able to do it off the top of my head, but, like, you know, like, the architect is, like, I wouldn't even be able to do it, but every character and their job stands for an actual uh, function of, like, a you know, filmmaking crew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cobb okay. is the director, and, yeah. uh, oh, God, who, uh, Watanabe is the producer. Yep. Um, Ellen Page is, like, set design or something. Yeah, set design. Them, Something yeah. like that. And uh, Hardy oh, is wardrobe or costume design. And yeah. uh, I'm trying to remember. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is... Uh... No, you know what? Uh, Hardy, I would call him the actor, too. Yeah, he's probably the actor. Yeah, because he's playing everybody. He's yeah, playing exactly. all the roles. Yeah, he's playing all the roles. And yeah. uh, Marion Cortillard's a fucking bitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she's to mind her own business. Uh, no, she's the diva on set. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, shooting yeah, people really, in the head. It's cool. This movie stands for a lot more than just the, the top drop or not. Uh, which, oh, yeah, uh, so much more. Jury, jury's still out on that. <laughs> yeah, and always will be. He'll never answer that. And always will be. He'll yeah. never answer. And you don't have the answer as much as you think you do. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> JD, this was on your list. Yeah, it was, man. Um, this... This one is up there with Interstellar as far as um, how uh, as far as Nolan films go. Yeah. How many times I've actually watched it, and yeah. those those two I think require the most uh, research to figure out what the fuck you just saw. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think Inception has a little bit more of that though. Like Interstellar, um, I don't know. It, it, Inception was just mind boggling. Like I walked out of that theater and thought I had a very firm grasp on what I had just seen. And that got shattered the minute I did some research. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and every, every time I watch it, every time I have a conversation about it, like I didn't know about the movie role thing. That's something I'd never come across. So I feel like that one, there's always more to learn in retrospect. Every time you talk about it, every time you watch it. It's well, and it's, it's almost it. like it's all the rules that he created that movie, which like that's, this is a big deal for me in sci-fi specifically have to be consistent. So, like, time yes. travel, like, breaks out all the time, you know? Like, when people, like, delve yeah. into... That's why I'm so interested in Primer, because you're saying it's so much into the science of that stuff. Well, that's right. where things get muddled. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. where you lose sight of your own rules and stuff like that and start bending kind of your own universe rules. Where Inception never does that. There are very, very, very strict rules, and none of them are ever broken. And the, right. the world is consistent and contained and very, very smart. I think him and his brother spent six or eight, six to eight years, like, writing the script for this movie. Like... I, you know, it was their passion project, you know, and it yeah. really shines through because, like, man, mm-hmm. there's just maybe just quality from top to bottom. I don't care how much of a revisionist history the world has on that movie these days, um, <laughs> or any which, Nolan movie nowadays, or any Nolan movie nowadays. Yeah, you know, the prestige, first, uh... the prestige really wasn't that good. You've never seen it, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it like That's, once a while yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. David Bowie, like, what, what was he even doing there? Memento's just a gimmick. <laughs> like, that yeah, type me- of shit. Yeah, the whole movie's just one giant. I've heard that before, too. It's yeah, just so many times. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, you're wrong. I'm sorry. And I'm sure if I'm you watch it, you're... if you watch it regular way, it's not as, I mean, it's not as thrilling or enticing and doesn't keep you guessing as much. Like, don't mm-hmm. watch it the regular. That's not the way he intended you to view it because he wants you to experience right. it the way Leonard does. Whatever. Fuck that. Fuck people that hate that movie or call it a gimmick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Inception's great. <laughs> great pick. I remember the first time that I uh, heard or read or whatever that the bomb bomb is just the the song that they're using to pull themselves out, that it's just that slowed down, and that blew my fucking mind. Oh, yeah. I didn't Wait, know did that. Y'all not, did y'all not know that? Oh. The, the, Explain the, it again. The I'm sorry. I didn't understand okay, it. Okay, so, so you remember they have the pull song when they're going through the five layers? They've yeah. got the song that plays that pulls them out of the layer beneath. It's like a the, French song or whatever. Yeah, the da, 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 whatever. Yeah. The bomb bomb is that song slowed down. Hmm. Oh, like wow. seriously? Yeah, I never knew that. So, so that that's what it would sound like with the the time, you know, the time separation, dilation. the time yeah. dilation between the wow. different layers. Wow. That's what it would sound like. So that that song is um is, is throughout the entire movie. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I never knew that. Y'all, y'all seriously never came across that? Wow. No, no I, never I, I hadn't that. heard that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that makes all the sense in the world, actually, because of the time shift. Uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly. 
I was going to say something else about Inception, and then we'll move on. Uh, the I've never been like moved to tears, like seen seven years later watching the movie, just from mm-hmm. the song itself at the end. I'm not even... Time? It's not time? time from Hans yeah. Zimmer, yeah. It's yeah. the best song he's ever done, period. period. Like, just period. Yeah. Just yeah. period. <laughs> even considering Ungo Boingo, song. whatever the fuck he did before, like... Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he was part of that band. Uh, but, like, what? it's seriously just, like, from start to finish. It's so emotional, and it takes you on a ride. And I'm getting chills talking about it. But, like, it's not even, like, a thing that um, – it's not, like, the actions that inspire so much emotion out of me so much. Because I know what happens. I know the story beats. It's the goddamn music, man. Yeah. Packs a yeah. punch. I mean, and then I it leaves know. you hanging at the end with just the and piano. I- no, and, the oh, use of, and the use of music and sometimes the lack thereof really elevate scenes like the scene where the train comes through the city. There's no Out music. nowhere, yeah. There's it's no music. Design, so when it, yeah. when it slams into something, it startles the shit out of you by yeah. design. Because a train just popped up in the middle of the city. You know, it's not, right. it's not supposed to be alarming, you know. Uh, yeah, God, what a brilliant movie. So good. Oh, my God, so good. Uh, great pick. I just... Um... Man, the sci-fi element of it is so goddamn seamless. It's just like crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It should have made my list. I don't know what the fuck. What the fuck ever. Nobody would have talked about <laughs> Coherence if I didn't put it in my list. Anyway. Yeah. True. <laughs> anyway, my number four. Here we go. It's Minority Report. It's ah. that high on my list. Wow, that high. Cool, dude. Wow. Yes. It's what? that fucking good, too. Um, This is like, honestly, if we were ranking Spielberg movies, I might even have it up there top three um this the year that minority report came out uh this movie was in post-production what did spielberg do he does what he always does he does two movies in one year catch me if you can mm-hmm. came out this year two of his what? best fucking movies came oh, out man. in the same year uh, uh yes i called them his best movies like catch me if you can is like perfection to me like that's one of my all-time favorites for oh, sure dude I, no without question um I, there's others i've seen more that hold more sentimental value like Jurassic Park, obviously. Um, yeah. And Minority Report. I mean, I've just seen... I've seen Minority Report probably the most out of all Spielberg movies, if I'm being honest. I remember um, seeing it in the theater like two or three times. I saw it once with friends, once with my dad. Uh, it was one of those movies that appealed to a lot of people. Yeah. I just remember like being a blockbuster. Of course, I got it there, and then I wouldn't stop watching. There was like a week or so I wouldn't stop fucking watching it like every day. Uh, cause I picked up new shit from it every day. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, there's so much like, I mean, I know it's the Philip K. Dick's, uh, story telling you what the world is, but it still wouldn't have worked without Spielberg's eye. I mean, he's the one giving it the specifically blue, uh, uh, overly yeah, that, bright that colors. Tint. Yeah. Um, that, uh, it seems like a dark world. It's like his darkest world that he films, honestly. I mean, outside of like, you know, Schindler's list. Um, cause that's obviously a dark <laughs> fucking world, but, uh, yeah. in terms of like, everything's just so like without color completely. Um, he, he dials back the color grading and, and makes everything super bright because it's, I mean, it's supposed to be like this dark fucking world, um, where people can predict your crimes and whether yeah. or not you end up going through with the crime doesn't fucking matter. If you had the intent, you're under arrest and you're yeah. put away for pretty much forever in like some type of field or whatever the fuck you want to call it similar to the matrix you know it's kind of like a just a field of bodies where people just mind wiped and watching tv or whatever right. um just chilling there um yeah the movie might go on a little long there's some people that kind of bitched about that i remember that even to date people still kind of do that where it's like oh it didn't need the uh, uh, third act or whatever <laughs> but it was it was a noir like it was a noir crime mystery movie like we still had this crime, the murder of Anne Longley, that hadn't been solved yet. If the movie just ended, we would have been like, well, what the fuck? You know? Right. Like, so it needed right. to have a resolution there. And uh, the Minority Report being a, uh, the title is um, originated from when one of the twins or whatever, or not one of the twins, one of the three precogs. Uh, yeah. When they have a fucked up, like when they misinterpret one of their dreams as actually somebody committing a crime, that's a Minority Report. Like, when, when one of their dreams don't come true, basically. Um, so like Tom Cruise, for example, he's on, he's being framed, allegedly, I guess, to go kill this guy, Leo Crow, who, based on the vision, seems like the guy that killed his, his son. Uh, and he has, you know, it's all about choice. You know, you can choose to fulfill the prophecy or you might not even do it, you know? So 
there's that whole question of free will versus determinism uh, that this entire movie is a, is a basis of. Um, it's just a definition of sci-fi for me. It's just fucking great. Anyway, yep. uh, JD, this was on your list at seven, right? Yes, it was. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. This this might be in the conversation for my favorite Spielberg movie ever. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I hear you. But, on that. Uh, <laughs> be honest. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's that fucking good. And what I like is that from from the get go, you already know the stakes. And and I found myself asking like what would I do in that world? Like, how, how would I feel about that world if that were reality? Because, yeah, it's not I mean, too I, I really, far from the truth, dude, based on how it's, much it's we're not. listening in on nowadays, you know? And, uh, you know, yeah, I do agree that intent matters. Um, mm-hmm. And if you were, like, two seconds away from shooting somebody, you were gonna shoot them. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> but how, how far do you expound upon that logic? Like, like and I like how they had the, the grades... Uh, like the color of the ball dictated oh, yeah. um, how either close or how likely it was. What what, mm-hmm. what did it? What did I thought it was like a ball, felony. The red or... ball was like a crime of passion. I think like the, one of them the was red murder. Ball, I know that. I know one of them was murder. Like, yeah. Yeah. But uh, like I mean, it was like, it was like high alert because it wasn't something that was premeditated. It was something yeah. that like through circumstance, like, so the red balls and I guess I'm kind of spoiling it for cop. <laughs> Not when really. they go to that, uh, they go to the one where it's the guy that, wife that's sleeping with somebody very early on in the movie that's a red ball because that's not something that that guy was waking up thinking about doing that day it just happened as a result of shit that was going on in real life yeah that's a great Um, by the way great sequence it's like a 20 minute sequence he's got to try to try to find the right house he's using the visions from the dream to determine where the house is right and zooming in, he finds zooming out, out that the, like you, that the vision yeah. itself is reversed. The image is reversed, so he has to... Oh, yeah. It's so fucking good, dude. Oh, my God. God man. It's I, I now so see, good. <laughs> we've talked about six movies that after you started talking about them, I'm like, I want to watch that tonight. This is, like, number seven. <laughs> it's, absolutely, like, it's on HBO, too. Shit. So go watch it, everybody. Cool. Uh, I think Schindler's and Saving Private Ryan are the only ones ahead of Minority Report for me. That's what it looks like based on my rankings. That might be sacrilegious to everybody because you know Jaws, ET, <laughs> all that shit. But uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Jaws is sorry to Kyle. One for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched Jaws two days ago, and I'm like, this movie is fucking like, God damn it, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. If you're watching it on Blu-ray, also, uh, it looks like it was shot yesterday. It does, yeah. Oh, it's cool. one of those, it's one of those it's movies that like. Yeah. Kind of like Blade Runner uh, on Blu-ray, where you're yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Blade Runner same way, where you're just like, man, like. I, I thought shit looked dumb like back then. Like, you know, I thought like, <laughs> yeah. shit looked bad. Yeah. I thought we had bad cameras you, or whatever. <laughs> you remember all those videos on VHS we watched as a kid. It's like, this movie's been formatted to fit your screen. It's because it was shot with the same technology as today. We just didn't have televisions capable of showing. Capable of yeah, we had yeah. those square TVs that looked like yeah. ass. They yeah. had to get it down to that 16 to 4 square ratio. Yeah, right. whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Fuck, fuck that uh, ratio. <laughs> Boy. Um. So that was my number four minority report. JD's number three. Uh, it's uh. Well, oh no, it's that. No. It's, 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 it's out. It's that wormhole movie. Oh man, I'm so happy. It's so high. That's crazy. I'm, I'm yeah, dude. I, yeah. I I love I love this movie. Um, from I think I rewatched it immediately after watching it for the first time. Like yeah, I mean I I believe that. Um, I saw it I three times in theaters. I yeah, same Jesus. here. I saw I saw it. Th- through, I think I saw it twice, but you and I saw it in IMAX and I saw it in regular. Yeah. Oh, how was it in IMAX? Uh, it Dude, it's unbelievable in IMAX. Yeah. That wow. wormhole scene, Damn. it might have come. I don't know. <laughs> I was so excited. Hey, the Pee Wee Herman, did you? The second when they went up into space, I was like, it is on! Uh, it was <laughs> right. Awesome. It was so it's a super nerdy moment for all of us. Yeah. Just like, oh my god! Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was one of those. It was because the because the the wormholes ro- constantly rotating, uh, yeah. and in IMAX, that's fucking trippy, dude. Like that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome Man, though. Every everything visually about that movie, and it, it made sense um, on on a base on a basic science level. Oh, JD's cutting out. Mean and all that. You're, you're oh, cut man. out. Sorry. What were you saying? Um. Just about the science and everything and yeah. how it's it's simplistic well, within. They had that real theoretical physicist, so that real wormhole. Yeah, Kip Thorne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like. I mean, the, the, a lot of this stuff is based off of his books and his mm-hmm. his right. teaching, the knowledge and stuff. So, I mean, like, it's as science heavy as it can be, science accurate. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And I think you know, I remember whole, like, I remember Neil deGrasse a wormhole uh, made sense. I was going to say I remember Neil deGrasse Tyson saying something along the lines of, or maybe some other scientist. Uh, he's the only one I know of by name besides Bill Nye. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember them specifically saying that you know nobody comes out of a black hole. So I mean, it's, so there's no way to know what's in it. So yeah. as yeah. soon as as soon as McConaughey went in it, all bets were off. They can tell well, yeah, whatever story they want to yeah, tell. That's when theoretical physics and science, like kind of, uh, theoretical, like you know, science and stuff like that, kicks in, mm-hmm. where people have an idea of what happens, but it's all about cherry picking to kind of fit your story. Because yeah. at that point, yeah. yeah no one can pick whatever he wants to because we really don't know. People yeah. can make some educated guesses, but like that's why you had know. to fit the story. And he, yeah, and he uses a lot of things that are real life, like real life theories and stuff like that. Like I know Jeff, you and I have talked about the Akashic Records before. I mean, that not only is it a library because it was representation of it, of his study, but it's supposed to be a visual. Like it's our lexicon. It's it's like it's where all things are, all knowledge is based from, and everything like that. You know, so it's like this area, this metaphysical place right. where all of our knowledge that we collect kind of goes. And you know, and the way that we can kind of wrap our heads around that is a library or you know a place that keeps knowledge. Uh, so there's just a lot of like imagery and stuff that means that, that points out to other theories, real life theories. You know, so I, the movie's just smart, man. It's yeah. really smart. And it's a movie that, like, just creeps up on my, like, best of all time list. Like, when we're talking about that top 40 that we're going to be doing. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. this mm, fucking inching its, its in way there. up. It's in there for it's me. It's inching its way up, you know, every time I, I go back and tinker with that list, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I live with four people. That <laughs> yeah, they, they were very excited that we put Interstellar uh, yeah. probably very I, high I'm on our I'm glad right they now. agreed with my placement. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's good. Dude, it's. I mean, I know people shit on the uh, uh, love. Really, I don't know why people love. get so hung well, up on that part. I think that. But I don't. Really, I don't know why think, either. Think I about think it though. Really think, smart. I think it's really it's, smart and like kind of true. <laughs> like it's, she's got it's a point. One, you know? It's the one non-tangible thing that every human being can say that they've experienced one yeah, way or another. You you cannot quantify it. You can't describe it, but every one of us knows it's there. And yeah. that's all it is, is expounding upon that. That's a foundation for believing that there is a lot out there beyond our own understanding. And, and that's, yeah. that's what resonates with me. You're not meant to understand it. You're viewing it from the viewpoint as a human being. So it's, it's not supposed my, to make sense. It's one of my favorite like lines in the movie. Like I really, I honestly don't understand the hate for that part. Like I really don't. And that's what I, yeah. oh, well, when they're up there talking about like, oh gosh, she's so insufferable. Like, it really, you know, like yeah, I don't get that either. I don't get it. the whole theme of that movie is based on love and love being this thing that reaches out beyond logic and science and everything like that, beyond stars. You know, like mm-hmm. it's what yeah. pulls him out. It's what pulls him out of everything at the end. You know. That that scene at the end wouldn't make sense if they didn't discuss love earlier in the movie, you know. Right, like, right. right. So uh, yeah, I just don't understand the hate for that scene. So stupid, dumb, dumb. Well, <laughs> I wrong. mean, when he's when he's saying uh, when he's telling Tars that uh, it's love and uh, what else does he say? Uh, we brought ourselves and stuff like that. Yeah, I always right. just assume that he was just projecting ideas aloud, like because he had nothing. I mean, else to go on. Like he's just yeah. guessing. Like I don't, I don't take what Cooper says as fact because yeah. he's he a human know. being like we yeah. are. Right. I mean, he's a flawed person like we are too. Like he made decisions uh, to leave his family, um, whether or not it's for the betterment of humanity. He still had an obligation as a father, and you know and he saw all these videos. He, By the way, that scene where he's crying watching videos, oh I can't. Even oh know. man, yeah, I can't uh, even with that. Yeah, I can't <laughs> even with that. He's like major that. sweaty crying too. He's got yeah, sweat and tears he's, rolling. He's that like, oh big, big open mouth crying. I'm like, oh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> and how it goes from you like know, happiness to immediate sadness and regret. Yeah, it's right. all just captured so perfectly. How he was not like recognized for acting in this movie. I mean, just what because of some. I don't know some he did this. what people call like weird writing issues near the end. I don't whatever. Fuck him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he did this on the tale of mud, and I don't understand how people still are like Matthew McConaughey is kind of a joke of an actor. I don't get uh, it either. He's put in some pretty good performances, and you're just blind to in them. The last I guess. few I don't, years, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're in a McConaughey I, renaissance right now. Have you Maybe. seen Mud? I mean, that shit. I watched that as a throwaway on Netflix one time. And yeah. It was just like holy shit. Yeah, he's got really great in that movie. Holy hell, he's butt off. In Dallas Buyers Club, he's great in that too. Yeah. So, Kyle, what's your number three? Uh, I I didn't. I don't know what your number three is. At all. Hmm. It's Empire Strikes Back. 
Hmm. Oh, I've never, never heard of it. Is that What's a new that? One? Yeah. Oh, that a... Star Wars. Is that that I thing mean, that... uh? feel like every single top sci-fi list in the history of ever has Star Wars in it. And if we don't have Star Wars on this list, people will fucking lose their minds. That's true. <laughs> so the fact that neither of y'all have Star Wars on your list is, like, outrageous to me. <laughs> you know, but, it's just, yeah, I, had a, I had a Empire reason Strikes for, it, for me. but I forgot it. I don't, I just, I just, like, not, like, I've been fighting, a, it's a fantasy movie battle my entire life. It's not a battle worth fucking fighting. <laughs> like, that's not... I mean, you don't want to. You don't want to like have your pants down in the middle of that argument. You know, like that's just not an argument worth even having these days. <laughs> I think Empire is like my number two or three all time. So all time, it's. I don't know, man. I just wanted to stick to something non, uh, not super franchisey. Even though I guess I, I don't know. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, Kyle just said it's a fantasy movie. That's the only reason I didn't put it on here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a fantasy yeah. movie in the terms of like what it's like context, but it's a, it's a sci-fi. You know what yeah, I mean? It's like, sci-fi fantasy, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Like, like it's I still said, largely every, like magic every, and fantasy. Every single sci-fi list in the history of lists probably has Star Wars on it. You know, True. I, don't think it's, I don't think it's far-fetched at all to have Star Wars on a sci-fi list. I guess is my no, point. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I will forever disagree. Really? I will die. It'll say on my tombstone, "Star Wars is not sci-fi." No, I'm just kidding. It's just not for me. It's not how I defined it in my list, so whatever. Huh, weird. <laughs> I go for the It's going like to go in the bracket for sure, though. All yeah. reality versus, like you said, just a completely God. different I world. I, I like something that's... credibility on the line when we're not talking about Star Wars and we're talking about sci-fi. That's, I guess, that's my point. Yeah, that's my point, I guess. I hear you. I don't see a lot of science in it, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah, but you're hung up on that part. I but, am. Like, the world... <laughs> Like, as collectively, like the masses, well, considered a sci-fi movie. You know? I mean, <laughs> if you look at technology as an extension of science, and yeah, I mean, everything that's got different tech in it could technically sure. be considered science fiction. Sure. So, yeah. you know. God damn, it is on the list of all the It, it, it yeah, really, not, really like, is. I'm making that up. It's just, it's a sci-fi movie. We can, we can sit here and call it fantasy all day. Jeff, you know that's how I feel about this movie. I mean, like, <laughs> you're making me feel like I'm the bad guy here, which is insane to me. Uh, but, like, you know, like you know, I feel that that's a fantasy movie. But it's on literally every sci-fi list ever and everybody's composed list in the history of lists. You know, so I'm just like, I got to put it in there. I mean, like, you know, that'd yeah. be fucking dumb <laughs> to not put it in there. Yeah, yeah I feel dumb now. But... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going by their rules. I'm making my own list. Yeah. <laughs> not even going to put it in there. Good. Hope I mean, it's going to go in the bracket, obviously, because nah, it's fucking not. Star Wars. Nah, fuck it. Who cares? Who cares? No. Who cares? What? What? This is okay, a mutually agreed upon. <laughs> if two out of three agree, then it's going in the goddamn bracket. Yeah. Man. It's I'm not sure J.D. is about it. So how, how could it? Well. Um, you know whatever. what? Star Wars isn't even good. I'm going to remove yeah. it from the top 40 of all time. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you've said enough about Star Wars ever, so uh, why isn't your number three? Because uh, there's stars in the wars, man. <laughs> <laughs> pew pews and, you know, wars, the magic in the... There's wars in the stars. There's stars in that war. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. It's brilliant. It's good movie, man. I, I, I go back between, like, uh, this and, like, Rogue One and, like, uh, there's so many things, like, being my, my favorite Star Wars, just depending on... But, like, I think nostalgia always rules over everything. Mm-hmm. Childhood yeah. memories, nostalgia, I like, it just, like just trumps everything at the end of the day so i mean yeah, True. Star Wars, i feel Those like yeah, member berries man they get you, uh, you know, my nostalgia is rock hard for star wars new hope it just yeah. is because that was my first exposure and whatnot sure. yeah. and it's just a it's just a lighter movie they hand out medals at the end oh, god <laughs> <laughs> it's just sweet uh, so that's your number three. Where are we at number three? My number three is Ex Machina. It's been pushed at least fifteen Woo. times now. Yeah, fifteen times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ex Machina. I didn't know if yeah, y'all knew get what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, I love the shit out of this movie, and this is like to me uh, the well, I mean, you got her and everything, and Blade Runner, of course, but uh, this one, I feel, I don't know. There's something about the, how isolated this story is. And uh, contained between three people, but there's so many, so many bigger ideas being explored here. Um, you know about uh, like AI in general, and and it, I mean it's everybody's representing something else uh, in humanity or whatever. 
um, uh, there's a larger message at play here instead of just like, you know, you know, you got Caleb who's a who's a nobody programmer, and then you got uh, what's fucking Oscar Isaac's character's name? Whatever you got, he's a dude, bro, but he's also you know the smartest person on the planet. Tony and Stark. Then you have fucking AI. What? He's Tony Stark. He's Tony Stark, basically. Yeah. He fucking is Tony Stark, dude. He yeah, drinks. Yeah. He dances right. out of nowhere. <laughs> and Tony Stark definitely makes robot girls and fucks them. Yes, we absolutely. We just don't see that on screen because it's Disney. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm still trying to come to grips with um, having to deal with the fact that Ava whispered something to Kyoko. Mm-hmm. And we have no idea what it was. And we'll never know what it was. Um, it's just Ava. after that, they killed Nathan. Yeah. So we, I, I don't fucking know what she said to her. If she was just like thanks or it, something she said activated Kyoko's sense of revenge against Nathan. I have no fucking idea. Um, I, but I like the sense of mystery this, this movie presents to us. Like Ava leaves Caleb at the end, for example. And, and you're kind of like left wondering like, yeah, yeah. Caleb should pretty much be dead now. Right? Like <laughs> he's locked in the facility, but in, in the middle of nowhere, I, but we don't see him die, so I don't, well, we're left to go, like, I don't know. I mean, he's a smart programmer. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, there's just a lot going on in this movie, and uh, I love the dialogue. I love the um, how Caleb's always trying to, like, smart, smartly talk with Nathan, and Nathan's just not fucking having it, you know? He's just like, well, I like the intricacies and the way that you design her. And he's like, Nathan's just like, just fucking stop with all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> just stop. This isn't that kind of movie. Let's right. just stop with all that. Uh, I'll just tell you that she was designed because of, you know, I was using Google to design her basically in, in people's search histories. So deal with that. And that's the most you're going to get out of the science behind it. <laughs> um, God, it's so goddamn good. And how, how much Caleb was manipulated. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, Elisa Vikander, did she get nominated for an award? Because she fucking should have. No, she yeah, didn't. she should have if she didn't. Something else got nominated in this movie. Like, something other part of this movie got nominated, I think. Yeah, not... visual, it won for Best Visual Effects, which yeah. is pretty surprising because it was a lower-budget sci-fi movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another thing. The visuals are just incredible in this they movie. Are. There's a yeah. lot to look at, even though there's very little to look at in terms of the scope. Like, it's just a house. It's that house. Know? Same that's house. It. Maybe the outside everyone. Over and over again. Exactly. So, great scenery occasionally you know, yeah that's about it right um yeah i just love this whole idea it's like a flawed test from the beginning because nathan is looking for specific results he says it's a turing test but it's fucking it's all bullshit anyway because he's looking for a specific result he knows ava's gonna manipulate caleb uh the only thing he didn't predict is that caleb would have any smarts or wits about him at all right <laughs> um because he's nathan he's egotistical as shit uh, so it's just, I mean, the entire thing's just like a fallacy from the beginning because Caleb, uh, excuse me, Nathan is looking for a specific result and trying to achieve, like achieve that result through any means basically. Uh, so he knew all this stuff was going to happen with the exception of Caleb letting Ava out. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know. That's, that's the most fascinating part to me is it's flawed from, the, it's kind of like inception where like Dom's already given up on all sense of reality because he has somebody else's totem to begin with, you know? Like, I mean, you're not supposed to have somebody else's totem. Clearly, Dom's right. given up. Um, it's That's just very fascinating to me. Anyway, that's my number three, is Actus Machina. And you guys had it on your list somewhere. Yeah, it's number four for me. Oh, nice. Um, y'all liked it, right? I mean, I, I guess you liked it. I think it's one of the I, best I, sci-fi yeah, movies it, you know, ever. Absolutely love Top it. Down. It's probably, probably the only movie I think I've only seen one. It's, it's the only movie I've only seen one time on this list, <laughs> other than, I guess, Blade Runner Final Cut. But, oh okay, yeah. So I'm yeah, definitely it's worth looking forward a rewatch. To a You'll rewatch pick up other things sure. like Caleb acts super robotic, uh, almost I, as a I misdirect. Thought, I thought he was the robot the whole time. Yeah, see, that's the thing. No, They're trying to misdirect no you because they show but, you his scar and stuff, and yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. cutting himself. Well, I mean, you don't know until he cuts himself wide open that he's right. not one of those androids, um, right? But yeah, well, and I then he later explains going. a scar on his back too as being attributed to an accident. But the same, yeah. He's just trying. He's just acting super robotic and uh, mm-hmm. right. um, just artificially blinking and stuff, like he's supposed to on command or something. Um, I watched. Um, it's interesting I watched to his watch episode of Black Mirror very shortly after watching this movie. Oh actually, yeah, and he's which a great is really, robot. A really in that cool one. comparison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So it's kind of like he's just really good at playing that. Uh, yeah, I don't know that that subtle. In that episode, she says something to him that goes. Uh, she says, "You're not you." 
and mm-hmm. uh, he's like, "Oh boy, that's another one I got to wrap my head around." Like, just it's like a yeah. brilliant line because it's so true. Like, he's yeah. like, "Oh wow, that's another one. That's oof, that's a little heavy for me." <laughs> <laughs> it's so good though. Um, I hope y'all rewatch it in time for the bracket. Well, I know I we got a few weeks for that, but yeah, we got plenty of. Time. It's worth it. One hundred percent worth it. Um, Kyle and I saw that together, and I remember it yeah. ending. And like, as soon as the credits started rolling, you were like, "Anyways, that fucking delivered. It was great. It was <laughs> awesome to experience that." <laughs> yeah, oh, man, it, it fucking delivered big time. Big time. Uh, so number that was my number three. JD, you're number two. All right. Well, this one might be. Uh, I don't know if y'all are going to think it's a stretch or not, but um, I put Children of Men as my Ooh. number two. Um, you know, it, I, it, I can't stir on that, putting on my list or not. Uh, it's it's not very heavy on the sci. Yeah. Um, but it is about I think biology. Yeah, um, it and is. Where where we come as a result of a paradigm shift in the the science of that world, and like we've talked about in the the other episodes where we've discussed this movie, it's not that far off. It's just it's, it's just a very very slight deviation from. Mm-hmm real life and i could see if that event were to take place why and how society would devolve that way yeah um and so from from that aspect because it's so close to home that's the most real science fiction to me is the stuff that i can watch and actually see happening and um god man i mean i know we all agree that this is one of the great movies ever ever to exist yeah not better than once but you know it's not it's (laughs) not better than once and uh i think i think with I think we can all agree that alcohol played a major role <laughs> yeah, in we uh, the way that that bracket shifted out. Um, it, it always plays a role in mine because I'm drunk all the time. But I just um, really will you never especially stop. I will over. never stop hating y'all for that. And now it's all coming back to me with <laughs> with it being killed off by once. And I did suppress this memory really hard. Y'all well, kill me. Y'all we're, we're happy, kill me sometimes. <laughs> we're, we're happy to reopen the wound. And I mean <laughs> that was uh, that was a that was a. I let my emotions get the better of me, and I'm not not ashamed to admit it. I fucking love once so hard. Yeah, um, it's it's my number one in our. Uh, I'll spoil that now. It's our number one in our in our music. Uh, oh yeah, we'll talk movies. about that. Uh, in we'll a talk few about months, that in like a year. When. Yeah, whenever. But yeah, that's gonna be my number one. I, I'm totally biased. It's just yeah, such yeah. a good movie. Sure. But uh, yeah, good Children movie to be of Men. About. <laughs> I, 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 think, uh, I think personally, anyway. Yeah, exactly. The guy and the girl, man. They're they're my faves. Uh, dude, but yeah, man, dude this, and chick. There you go. This uh, this movie needs some representation on this list. I'm, I'm I was surprised that uh, you guys didn't throw it in anywhere in there. So glad we could get I it. I had it there. at ten for a long time, and then I was like, you know what? Nobody's going to talk about coherence if I don't put it on there. So yeah, and and you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because yeah, it's a small that. movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's right. it's it's one of those really smart predestination primer type movies that needs to be seen. Right. You know, yeah, right. um, for sure. Uh, Children of Men's great pick though, and and yeah, dystopian is definitely like a, a sci-fi. I mean, that's yeah, it's a, just a got reality that different from our own. It's not too far yeah. from us though. It's not too, exactly. that's the best kind of sci-fi to me. Is like it's not too distant. It doesn't feel that yeah. far away. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like Ex Machina in that way, where like it feels very familiar. Anything her Black too. Mirror related? I would say her. You know? Oh yeah, yeah her totally. especially. Her, we're like thirty years removed from whatever that is. You know. Yeah. It doesn't feel that far. Like, it makes sense that people would walk everywhere and, you know, make friends with their phones or OSs and mm-hmm. yeah. play video games the way that he was playing them. Uh, yeah. And so casually, too. It wasn't like he was blown away by any of that. Even though I would be at that age. I yeah. would be like, this is fucking amazing. But he yeah, was he like... 30 oh. years later, I'm like, can you believe this guy's video games? Jesus. Yeah, and he's just like playing them like normal. Like, it's no big deal. And it's just crazy to me. Uh, yeah. But but that, I love those types of movies where you can envision yourself in, uh, or your society in that world at some point. Yep. Um, some of my movies, not going to happen. <laughs> A large chunk of my movies, never going to happen. But uh, yeah. Children of Men, totally going to happen. <laughs> It could. We're fucked. One way or another. We're totally fucked. It could. Well, we are fucked. It's just how is it going to happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, equilibrium, another one. That's totally going to happen. Oh, um, that's an on-man for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. It's a hard on-man for me, yeah. For oh, me, too. Yeah. It's great. Uh, he's a sense offender. Uh, that's my favorite. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. I love the way yeah. the, the kid says that. Yeah, they, you will get your dosage of equilibrium. That's, equilibrium. That's fucking, great. fucking just nation of snitches. Oh yep. man, that's a great movie. Uh, so Kyle, you're number two. 
Uh, yeah, my number two, uh, kind of like in the, the vein of Star Wars, it's not really heavy in the science department. It's very, you know, non-realistic in almost every way, but it's The Matrix. Uh, oh, you know, cool. Uh, very, uh, you know, man, that movie's all about, like we were talking about earlier, going into the brain space, going into the mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have all your robots and your, you know, it's just like, it's, again, it's, it's if your bleak bloops and your bling blangs, you know, so while it's not like uh, rooted in our reality, uh, kind of, I guess, uh, or, you know, uh, you know, cause it's got the similarities and everything like that, or it follows any sort of real technology or anything like that. I guess the same could be said about Inception and everything as well. Like it, it's still very much so about building a world and building rules and in those, uh, you know, having two, two worlds that you're talking about and going into simulations and everything like it's, a, yeah. you know, it's a fucking, it's a, Fucking sci-fi movie, I guess, you know. Um, oh, it's sci-fi I, as fuck, dude. Are you serious? Sci-fi, as sh- exactly. When I was saying earlier, like, I accidentally left this off my list, you know, it was just like, dude, yeah, that movie's got, like, everything that a sci-fi movie has. Robots and mm-hmm. fucking, you know. Uh, I have a... Uh, uh, it have... it's also has, like, you know, sci fi is supposed to be kind of a reflection of reality, you know, so it's supposed to have a message. Uh-huh. And, like, you know, the message here is, you know, oppression and fighting against the system. And, you know, like, you know, it's... Maybe not a message, but that's really more of, like, the base story and the themes and everything going on there. And that's stuff that we kind of deal with, like, right now, you know? We don't agree with a lot of the things, the way that the system works and everything like that. Uh, now, we're not stopping bullets, you know, to, <laughs> to, to make a change or anything, but, you know, it, there's there's some reflections that could be made from uh, the reality that it, that we're living in, the reality that's being created in that movie. Did we? Uh... I have a co-worker that hates, and we're, we should have pushed that, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, well. Yeah. Well, oh, it's really? my number two as well, so let's just push it. Oh, well, whoa. who cares? <laughs> well, I already, already talked it, about it, so. <laughs> you know what? It's it my, doesn't, it, we're going straight to JD one, anyway, so, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're all going to talk Perfect. about how much we fucking adore the Matrix. I think what, what sci-fi is, to, I mean, to me at least, is like, uh, if the science is in it and it's nutty, it needs to be, like, explained. And it's, in the Matrix, it's to- it's fully fucking explained. It's um, explained. Yeah, totally. like there's a whole scene where uh, you're resulted to a battery. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's, there's See, I have a there. coworker whose biggest complaint and the reason why he can't get into the movie oh is because of how ri- how ridiculous and inefficient it would be for sentient machines to use humans as a battery source. And like, he, he'll talk about this shit for like five minutes about how ridiculous it is, and I just. I can't. I can't even respond to that. Afterwards, I'd just be like, "Yeah, but that lobby scene, though." <laughs> yeah, I know. How are you letting such a small tidbit affect just even the visuals of this movie and the action sequences? Like, how can you not at least get past your own stupid fucking? Such a weird thing to be hung up about. Hitch up. Yeah, I've never heard anybody say that. I hope he listens to this episode. By the way, that'd be fucking awesome. Fucking weirdo. Uh, yeah, uh, you're weird. Don't it's just stop listening to our show at this point. I just fuck, fuck <laughs> I off. doubt. Um, I doubt he does. He has kids, so he has other shit. Oh, to okay, worry good. About. Uh, yeah, fuck you and your kids. You know what? I, you're not going to show them this movie, and it's all yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, dude, the Matrix is is named. the one I've watched the most, and it is my number two. It it was my number one for the longest time, uh, for the longest time. But I had to like kind of better fit the de- from my personal definition of sci-fi just. Wanted to fit it better with something else, uh, or something I felt qualified more as sci-fi. But yeah, regardless, The Matrix is fucking fantastic. It's all about choice, or as we find out in the sequels, the illusion of choice. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of us uh, seeing ourselves in Neo because he's this dude working this shitty job that he hates. He's outgrown his suit. You, I mean, a little bit. You can tell that he's worn it over and over again to the point where he's like yeah. outgrown it a little bit. Um, he's just, it's, he's just tired of the routine and he wants to fucking get out. And wouldn't you His, love uh, to be like told one day that, Hey, you're meant to be like a superhero or some shit. That'd be but amazing. Also, <laughs> but also you're a guy who's caught on to the idea of this like other world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause he's, he knows what the matrix is, or at least he knows to at least wonder about he knows it. You about know? The question, yeah. he, he knows yeah. who Morpheus is, you know? So it's like, he's a guy who on his off time digs for the truth, you know? Yeah. So it's just like. And then, of course, yeah, the big, like, you end up being this prophecy, and, you know, we all have that dream. Of course, day, yeah. We'll wake up and have a king in some way, you yeah, know, yeah. so. But God, this so, it's so good. And a lot of the sci- people will just probably write this off as more action-based, but the action doesn't exist without the sci-fi elements. Like, 
Yeah, totally. The only reason they're, action like, is happening is because they're willing to happen in their minds. Uh, well, yeah, right. exactly. They're and they're capable because they've had like the mind training or whatever. You know, right. and they they know they know how to bend reality. So you get those cool high jumps and everything like that. Oh, like yeah. it's not just it's not just wire foo for the sake of it. Like it makes sense within the context of the world. Again, which you know we're talking about. Well, we're talking about what makes a sci-fi movie sci-fi to us personally or whatever. And, like, for me, it's always world-building. 100% of the time, world-building. Um, you know, so any movie that's just, like, going to go into depth about, like, the rules of the universe and, like, you know, um, you know, different, you know, different mm-hmm. people's you know, mindsets on the world and stuff like that. Like, that stuff just elevates the immersion for these movies. Yeah, um, yeah The Matrix does that a ton, like, whether they're in The Matrix or out of it. I mean, Morpheus is always explaining something to Neo. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, he coughs up blood. I thought it wasn't real. Your mind makes it real. Shit like that. It, it's just yeah. Yeah. throwaway stuff that just works. Uh, and right. How can it be the one if he's dead? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm put a stick in my mouth. If you, I know. If you would have told me the truth, I would have told you to show that red pill right up your ass. Right. <laughs> Not like this. I love the. Uh, I love the Not uh, like this. Not like this. <laughs> What's the shit that they're eating? The uh, the corn the stuff or whatever? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. only good for yeah. decreasing like... engines and killing brain cells. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah you're yeah, talking yeah. about the drink. That's, oh, that's the, the drink. drink. Yeah. That's right. That's right. The, the chicken stuff, he's like, he's like, does does it make it taste tasty like wheat? chicken? Or do I think, or tasty wheat? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, do I make it taste like chicken? Because that's what chicken actually tastes like. Oh, that's a great like. little I... aside. That, yeah. That's a, that's yeah. Talk about world building. Like, that's just the most random yeah. shit you would never think of in this movie. And they added it on purpose to make you go, yeah, yeah how do they know what chicken tastes like? Like, yeah, is yeah. that why chicken tastes yeah, like right. everything? You know, like, oh, yeah. my Thank God. You. Yeah. Wachowskis were so Man. in control of their material Did, for this uh... movie and the way the movie was made. Like, it's just, God damn it, this movie's amazing. It should be my fucking number one. God damn it, Jeff. Pretty happy with my number one. Did y'all know that his uh, last name Anderson literally means son of man? Really? No, like, I didn't. Anders that. Anders is a uh, it comes from Andreas, meaning man or manly. Oh, uh, so so the surname Anderson is is actually literally like son of man. So I like if he went into, the, like, if he went by Neo Anderson, he'd be like new son of man or something like that. New son of man. Yeah, basically, exactly. Makes yep. sense. Uh, yeah, of course. It's it, there's a lot of. I mean, they they borrow from a lot of different religions and allegories and stuff from from a lot of different. We uh, should just say fuck the rest of us and just talk about the Matrix forever. Uh, we could can we that. actually had that podcast? Already? Yeah, we did. Canceled <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. Hugo Weaving is unbelievable in this movie too. By the way, like yeah, oh for sure. Greatest. His greatest. his intonations and stuff. Like he is thoroughly like through and through a program. It's the smell. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's not until smell. that monologue though that he separates himself from the other programs and he finally gets kind of emotionally involved in his uh, right. in right. his mission where yeah. he's like, I have to get out of here. Uh, they have to get out of this place, and you have the code Zion is the key, and shit like Zion that. And he's just like shaking key. him, and Morpheus is like, yeah. it's fucking hilarious, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that part. I like he's like all oh, fucking makes. drugged up on something, man. It's great. And then the ridiculous part where Neo shoots the entire thing with a Gatling gun and doesn't hit Morpheus once. It's amazing. Oh yeah, my god! Beautiful. Yeah, what a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he downloaded it, so Matrix. Yeah, he downloaded it. <laughs> Shoot through that instruction manual pretty goddamn quick, I'll tell you. But yeah, this put Hugo Weaving on the map, dude. Like, he was an Australian, just yeah. a guy. And now he's... That and Lord of the Rings, man. Well, I mean, this first. Uh, but yeah, Lord of the yeah, Rings after the fact. that and then Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Totes. like, oh my god, now this dude's everywhere as bad guy McGee. Uh, or even the drunk dad from Hacksaw Ridge that breaks your heart. Um, mm. He's so good, dude. He's such a great actor. Anyway... That's my number two. JD's number one. Kyle. Yeah. What is your number? Is your number one per chance? Uh, Dark City. Uh, it is not Dark City. <laughs> no. It is actually. I know lots of people Chappie. that love that movie. It's Chappie. Chappie. Oh, that makes Chappie. sense. Chappie. I am Chappie. Love, God, love me you some know Death Neil Blomkamp just three for three with that movie. Jesus, okay. uh, I love the rappers. Die, Die Ant Word was just so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jesus Christ, that movie's so bad. I really like Neil Blomkamp. Anyway, I do too. Uh, I really like Neil Blomkamp. Uh, Blade Runner is my number one. Oh, okay. You know, when I was sitting down and thinking about my list, I was thinking about like what the what the absolute best you know sci-fi movie is. Like, 
I feel like it had to have been Blade Runner for so many reasons mm-hmm. because it's the world that we all envision as the future. When you think about like the future, I guess not all. I guess it's making a really crass general statement, but I, I get that sentiment from when other other people make future worlds. It's usually very Blade Runner inspired. Yeah, you know. So it's like there's a collective out there that just like this is the future to us or whatever. It's so inspirational that like neo noir type of like setting or whatever, the shanty towns, the you know, buildings on top of buildings on top of buildings, just overpopulation, uh, a robot helpers, obviously, and all that stuff, you know, flying cop cars, huge yeah. giant, you know, neon uh, billboards and everything like that. Like, that's the vision that you have of the future when right. you're thinking of, like, what the future looks like or, or what our close version of the future could be. Uh, so that kind of tipped it ahead a little bit. And just the, I mean, just how smart this movie is, man. You know, like, you you. You never, I mean, we're still to this day talking about if he's a replicant or not. You know, yeah. people are pretty passionate about it. me being one of them. I kind of shut people off and people are like, oh, he's not a replicant. I'm like, well, you're stupid. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I have no clarification that I'm right. I feel it in my heart well, that I'm right, but, you know, and Ridley Scott will say that, you know, that he's very upfront. Yeah, he's a replicant he or whatever. Over but he's also, doesn't, uh, he's also doesn't Harrison old... Ford confirm it in the new trailer? Doesn't he say they were hunting us? Well, he, he only says us, know. though. We don't know what that means. He yeah, could I just mean Blade that, Runners. I, thought, okay. I, yeah, okay. I, I took okay. it as Blade Runners, and I have a theory that he is the original that the that the uh, replicant is made off of. Yeah, so, okay. like, I like he's that the theory. In the, so in the first movie, like that's that's the replicant, and in this movie, like he's the original, like he's the human that's made. I after. like that theory so oh, much. Oh, that's cool. why he's old and stuff like that. You know, but that's just uh, me again. That's just me holding on to this replicant theory. And again, sure. that's my point. To this day, thirty years later. We're arguing about if yeah. he's a replicant. We're 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 pulling evidence from all these little scenes, these out of context moments, and going. Right. This is why right. I know he's a replicant, or this is why he's not a replicant. You know, like it's a movie that inspires debate all these years later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Harrison Ford was very upfront. I never played the part as a replicant. I don't see myself as a robot. You know, he's yeah. that's he'll say that. You know, so you have all these conflicting arguments, and also you know Ridley Scott saying to mean anything. Did he write the movie? Was he the writer? No, it was a Hampton something. He wrote, he wrote the yeah. sequel too. Uh, so the else. writer probably has a little more say in, you yeah, know, right? in that than the director, to be honest. Yeah. The director uh, so, can always have a con- conflicting idea of their movie, absolutely. of course. Yeah, just because what's on the pages doesn't mean that translates to the eyeball. So. Right. Uh, so Speaking yeah, of I mean, eyeballs, just, there's a random eyeball in this movie. There is. A random <laughs> eyeball. Oh, and Roy Beatty in his goddamn monologue at the end. Oh man! Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what's the actor's name, dude? Um, oh, I don't. Know. <laughs> Rudger Hauer. He is yeah, great. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, he does. He does a, a voiceover <laughs> or a motion capture he is for lost uh, in the rain. Uh, for the Observer. This Observer video game that is pretty much Blade Runner. It is. Yeah, I've seen it's, screenshots of it. It's so about good, it. dude. Like, and yeah. he is just the best. Yeah, you sex Blade Runner, you know, I mean, like, all these games are just, you know, it's just, it's Blade Runner, yeah. you know, like, that's, that's what, that's what we think of when we're talking about, like, the near future, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's, like, that's just kind of what the, 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 the envisionment we have in our heads. This is a, a great movie. God damn, I should have put this movie higher. Uh, this is the movie that pretty much, like, spearheaded the entire sci-fi and leading into 90s, or new age sci-fi, I should say. Yeah, I would say 90s, so. yeah. 2000s, to current day. Like, I mean, hello, Blade Runner 2049. Still looks amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. And we're about to get Cyberpunk 2077 by the Witcher developers, you mm-hmm. know? And that's just Blade Runner, the video game, you know? Like, yeah, it sounds awesome. Dude, like, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's so inspirational, and I think that that, me- that carries a lot of things forward when it comes for me, like, making lists, you know, like, yeah. It made a splash so big, it was bigger than itself. You know, people hated this movie when it came out. You know, time proved that this movie was good, you know, yeah. uh, and different versions of the movie, but uh, uh, but mostly time. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, number one for me, Blade Runner. Cool. I hear that. I just don't revisit it that much, if I'm being honest. Uh, hell, I don't revisit my number one that much either because it's a little long. But uh, the point mm-hmm. is... The point is, though, that I should have definitely put Blade Runner a little higher, like a little higher. But I, I went based on like which ones have I watched the most of, and and all stuff, and which ones have stuck with me the most. My number one stuck with me a fuck ton, and that's a uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. Oh, and I, what, a, I, what a shocker! Boring, what a shocker! Boring, shocker. boring predictable, so predictable, loser. 
Uh, I, I had the luxury and privilege of seeing this in theaters uh, like a few months ago and having a full-on panic attack. It was amazing. Uh, nice. Because <laughs> that ending is like... I've never taken acid before in my life, but I'm pretty sure I was on acid when I saw Listen, the, uh, the Stargate sequel. Allegedly, I know what I'm talking about, and it's a lot like that. Allegedly. Oh, okay, cool. Allegedly, allegedly. yeah. Um, and the whole time I'm just like, why is it not moving to another scene? Yeah. Why is it still happening? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a whole panic just consumes you. <laughs> and it's mirrored on, on Bowman's face. Like He's even like, what the fuck is happening? Just taking in all this information and... And whatever that scene's a metaphor for, it's your own interpretation. That's that's what I love about this movie too. Like, is the ending is, it's it's definitely what the fuck worthy. It's definitely like a mother slash, what's another example of a movie, Neon Demon, whatever type ending where like it polarized. Like when this came out, people fucking hated this movie like big time. Uh, like even like Woody Allen was like, yeah, I saw the movie the first time and fuck that movie. Like I just fucking hated that movie the first time I saw it. And then you go back and watch it again and you're like, okay, I'm getting new meanings from, from this or whatever meanings you attach to certain things that happen in the movie. Um, there's so many videos you can watch online that kind of, kind of explain the final act to you, I guess, in terms of the evolution of man. Um, (laughs) but this is like, to me, like the quintessential definition of sci-fi where like it's, it's covering the beginning of time and the future, like so much of it, it's it's insane. It start. I think I made the joke in the last episode where I was like, it started with apes in the first ten minutes, and I was like, the fuck is this? Turn this shit off. I was like, yeah. when I first saw this movie, or it was the first time in a long, 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 long time. I was like, what the fuck are apes doing in this movie? I only remember the space shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like alarming. I don't remember that at all. And uh, I'm watching this. Now, talk about a movie that like you can watch a Blu-ray of and be like, did they film this yesterday? I remember watching this going, are those apes? <laughs> like, I was so confused. <laughs> uh, they, they just look so good. Like for I mean, obviously, they're not apes. They're like Neanderthal-ish. They're almost Neanderthals or whatever. Um, or almost to that level. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot happening. There's so much going on for it being like a uh, punch, like just an operatic like musical piece for a large chunk of it. With just space stations floating around and stuff, um, there's a lot in what's not said. Like especially the scene where Hal's being uh, um, taking his revenge on the the, sh- the crewmates or whatever. He kills them all basically, except for David Bowman, of course. And he comes in to like disassemble uh, Hal or whatever, disassemble whatever. And uh, the whole time, all you hear is like the dude breathing. He doesn't even say anything. He's just breathing through the suit. And you hear Hal saying stuff like, maybe you should take a stress pill and think this over or whatever. (laughs) He's like talking with, if he were a human, he would have panic in his voice. Like, please don't do this. But instead he's just like, please don't, please don't. And and stuff like that is just brilliant choice by Kubrick there in terms of uh, making the AI emotionless and stuff. Uh, That's a great scene, by the way, because all you hear is the breathing. And when it stops, it's fucking noticeable. Like when it, when it cuts off, uh, you and you're taken to whenever Bowman to Jupiter and beyond uh, in the final act, you're like, oh, he's not doing the breathing thing anymore. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> it's just brilliant sound design. It's just like a brilliant movie all the way through. Um, it's hard for me to revisit it. That's the only thing that kept The Matrix at my number one for such a long time until I was like, you know what? I don't think modern sci-fi would be what it is without 2001. Everything True. was very pulpy and cheesy up until 2001. Um, and just not good. Like it was you are just right. like a we joke. wouldn't have Interstellar without that. Yeah, you are we, right. I mean, there's so much of Interstellar that's like cut and paste from 2001. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially in terms of the practical use of like ships and how they shot the flights of them. Um, right. How they just use models and stuff. Uh, it's that a was fuselage. Brilliant. Um But it just looked. Or centrifuge. It's uh, a centrifuge. <laughs> Uh, what, what was I going to say? Uh, also, Arrival. Uh, the way that uh, Denis Villeneuve shot some, sometimes the way he shot the shell was like shot for shot the way that uh, Kubrick captured the monolith against oh, yeah, the sunrise. Yeah. And it was like the exact fucking same shot. And it's just crazy, crazy how much influence this movie has from 1964 or 8 or whatever. Uh, and it still like bleeds into sci-fi that we see nowadays. It's just crazy. There'd be no Star Wars without this shit, man. Like, because George Lucas was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do that in space, but like fantasy and shit. 
yeah. and and now he this movie gave him the means to do that, like the the special effects to do that. Uh, so that's why that age is well too. So much influence. I that's why I had to be it, like I felt obligated to put it at number one. So sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Kubrick slut is predictable. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so it's time to put our brackets together. <sighs> Woo! Here we go. Excuse me. Uh, oh, y'all put it on your list too, though, right? You had yeah, it's on it. six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And JD, when did you see it? <laughs> I don't when remember did talking I... about this movie with you. When did I see it? Yeah, dude. I mean, I I watched it a long time ago. Recently, rewatched it for our um... shit. I don't remember if I rewatched it for something we did or not. But oh, okay. I've seen it within the last year. I know that. Um, no, man. I mean, I, I watched that a long ass fucking time ago. I'm not. I'm not new to that. Oh, okay. I'm glad I made y'all's list, man. Like, yeah, I mean, it's it's the pinnacle of sci-fi. It's just for me. I mean, I, I am I am more biased towards stuff like Interstellar because it's it's newer and I've seen it so many times. And like you said, mm-hmm. with 2001, I don't I don't feel compelled to watch that every six months or yeah, even a year. It's tough you know, to, it, oof. it's it's the a, pacing it's is a little rough. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an incredibly long and drawn out movie. But once you get older and you start appreciating things about film. Um, and just the way they're made and, and for shot and all that shit. Mm-hmm. That that's really where that movie stands out to me now as an adult. Yeah, and I know Kyle. This is like a new love for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's probably in my top ten of all time. It's very, Holy very good. Shit, that's awesome. Yeah, super super. It good. might have. This will upset people. It might have exited my top ten. Of all time. Wow. 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 Uh, it's sci-fi. Analyzing it from a sci-fi perspective and an overall enjoyability perspective on my top 40 films of all time i mean we're talking about favorite movies of all time Mm. it's a little different definition for me at least i mean that's just i don't know i'm just weird anyway it's my most technical movie on my list you know i thought my i thought my i thought my top 10 needed like a really technical like achievement you know like a movie like it's definitely that yeah you know what i mean like where my list is mostly just a lot of like it's it's a jerk off Kyle list. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> it is, so need a little bit of objectivity on them. Uh, I already have the first three spots filled based on how we have aligned on certain things. Um, so our number ones are for I put the Matrix at number one because we both. I mean, Kyle and I have it at two. JD mm-hmm. has it at one. Okay. Okay. Um, I put two thousand one at two because uh, only because JD has it one higher than uh blade runner like okay okay you have it at five and right, 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 at right, six. right right uh so i put that at two and then blade runner i put it three because I agree. uh jd and i have it at six uh, i agree kyle has it at one of course then it's all a whole fuck fest here um because mm. we have we have such different movies it's so great did we put well, 2000, did you say 2001 yet yeah 2001 is number th- yeah. two interstellar um interstellar, where do you have Mar- Mar- Seven. Wow. Seven. I had it at five. Okay. I had it at three. Time I put that next. Circle. Okay. Let's put Interstellar in here. Or if we want to sneak in Ex Machina before that, I'm fine with that too. Oh, yeah. You know what? We should put Ex Machina a little bit because it's a little bit. Uh, Interstellar, actually, I think, I think is mutually higher. So I'm going to go Interstellar yeah. than Ex Machina. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Either way. Either way. Either way. Either way is fine. Either way is Either way. Either way. Uh, Number her? Six. Uh, number six, uh, we have her. 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 <laughs> watch, your, watch your pronouns, guys. So I have her at seven, you have five. Uh, her. Yeah, sure. Let's go with them. Her. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Zim. <laughs> Zim, zur, her. Zur. Zim. Zim, zur. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm gonna have to put Minority Report here because sweet, sweet Kyle and sweet. I or JD and I have that shit okay. kind of high ish mutually. Um, okay, so Inception. Let's see, Inception mutual for us. Yeah, I do want to account for Hans that you guys have that nobody else like. You have Children of Men. JD oh, and Kyle oh, has yeah. Empire. Let's let's get that on there somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna put Inception next though because that's my Commun- commonality. Yeah, it's a commonality. I mean, I, I think I only have Children of Men side just because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I couldn't justify putting it at number 10 when it's, like, on this list when it's in right. my top 10 of all time. Oh, yeah. You know what? We have a, an Eternal Sunshine, too. Uh, yeah, that can go in there. Uh, so, yeah, now we can do, like, you know, the ones that nobody else has. Uh, Children of Men, shit like that. Uh, Children of Men was two for JD. Empire was three. 
for Kai Kai. Sorry, I know you hate that. Uh, <laughs> Kai Kai, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Uh, I think you're still on my phone. Is Kaniels? I like that. Um, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you said you said Kaniels before. Yeah, is it spelled K N E E L S like Niels? Like no, Niels down Z. You put a Z at the end of it, right? Yeah, but it's still K N though. Solid. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's you know, exactly <laughs> how I've always wanted it to be spelt. So. <laughs> The K is silent. That's one, that's one of my dreams <laughs> in life. Uh, uh, Serenity, predestination, arrival, coherence, and primer. And how many more spots do we have left? One, two. Three, what about four, uh, Serenity? Five. That made Kyle's list. I think I yeah I mentioned that one. Oh okay. Uh, okay. La, 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 la. So we have my arrivals at uh, my arrival arrivals at eight for me. Um. Serenity is at nine for Kyle. Primer's at ten. Well, hold on, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a rival. I'm gonna put a rival here for counting like rankings and shit. And then Serenity. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of a toss up between all of our tens, which are incredibly different. How many uh, spots? Do we have? Just one. Uh, we have three, so we can account for all of our tens. Then oh, just nice. Do that. Yeah, just do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just don't know about ordered. I guess it doesn't really matter. I but, wouldn't. Um, yeah, I wouldn't put too much thought in it. We could just do... I want to put Coherence at 16 because it's a way lesser known movie than Primer. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Then Primer, then... Well, actually, you know what? Then Predestination, then Primer, because it's got a... So Primer's at 14, Predestination's at 15. So it's basically just based on notoriety and yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Cool. All right, cool. So this creates some very, very interesting matchups. I'm, holy fuck, dude. Like, first round, Inception, Eternal Sunshine... Whoa. Um, Minority Report, Children of Men. Whoa. We're going to break some hearts. Her versus Empire Strikes Back. Good luck, Kyle. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Ex Machina uh. versus Arrival. I want to kill myself already. Uh, this is going to be great. Okay, so I'm literally just going to rattle off titles. We don't have to reflect. But here's why I have 20 fucking honorable mentions. Uh, Back to the Future, Contact, mm-hmm. Dawn mm-hmm. of the Planet of the Apes, District 9, Donnie Darko, Edge of Tomorrow, uh, Gattaca, Looper, Midnight Special, Moon, yeah, uh, Snowpiercer, Source Code, Sunshine, Terminator Two, Upstream Color, and those are not counting the ones that we already talked about. You've uh, named you've named them all, then. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. like, there's so fucking many fucking good them, ones. So, yeah. <laughs> How do you cut them down? It's crazy. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. almost put Moon as my see... number ten. I almost did. Yeah. yeah, people need Same to see here. that one because uh, I will say uh, Aliens. You know, Aliens is classic. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. There are Aliens on there. Game Over. Left that out because that's like a new love for me, and I still need to grow to appreciate it more. Yeah, that's the only reason. Uh, but it's great though. And yeah, you know I'm partial to the first one anyway, but it's still sci-fi. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I need to rewatch that entire like series. Well, the first two. Mm. Watch the first <laughs> <two>. <laughs> I feel like I, I should see quad- three though because I have people the are. Quadrilogy on uh, Blu-ray, like I have the yeah. whole quadrilogy, and I watch only two movies of it. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I feel like I should see three though because I keep hearing people talking about it in a positive nope. light, somewhat. Oh, I, nope. I went back. I went back and saw it finally, good. and I'm like, no, nah, this people are dumb, dude. Never I don't, mind. Like, people You're are like, just like, trying to like date- quit. I just want to love all of David Fincher's movies. Well, I do, I do good, big time. Good yeah. luck with that because he's made a bad one. So. <laughs> yep. Also, also, you can't forget, you know, uh, what's the name of the shitty one? Uh, Curious Case Benjamin Button. He did that too. Yeah. Mm. So you know, he's got two at least, in my <laughs> opinion. I mean, I know that was like regarded. Uh, here's some awards. I thought that movie looked really stupid. I never. Somebody did a, a top ten David Fincher movie, and they're like, just for the record, he's only done ten movies, so. We have to talk about some of these. Yeah, some of the shitty ones, yeah. Yeah. Like, the last one's definitely Alien 3 and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, But he's made some outstanding movies, though. Yeah, Uh, there's a balance We're going to eventually do, like, mini brackets for directors and stuff and just go really in-depth into their work. Um, Especially, like, like the newer ones, like Fincher and stuff that deserve it. Eight Um, scenes with, like, a a two spot where we do, like, like a pre-bracket for your seven and eight and your nine and ten. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that could work. I mean, unless they're sh- shitty movies, and it's just like, all right, let's just do the eight or whatever. Well, yeah, if you've only uh, got eight, then you've only got eight. But if they, if the director has enough to warrant ten, then yeah, yeah. do it. Do it. So do it. it's really great. I can't wait to uh, argue this and be mad at each other after. Uh, so My goal is to watch every movie on this list, on the bracket, between now and the time we record. Because I think I can do it. We have well, enough I wish time. You, I wish you, we do have enough time. Uh, I wish you luck. I, I'm not... 
I'm going to watch and struggle to watch the four movies I've ever seen on this list, so I'll <laughs> see you on the other side. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going to have to rewatch a lot of them. I'm, Minority Report's one that's like, you know what? I, I, I want to rewatch every day. It's so good. Yeah, I'm with you. It's you crazy. guys, I'm seriously, if this movie sucks... Be it's not. I will be suck, confused if you Tom hate it. It's one of Tom Cruise's best movies. <laughs> do you like? Uh, do you like Edge of Tomorrow? Not like it's comparable at all. But yeah, I, I love Edge of Tomorrow. I think it's fucking it's, great. Yeah. For me, it's it's. Well, Minority Report has more depth to it, though. I mean, yeah. it's, Edge of Tomorrow is yeah. fun. There's, it's more of a social statement. Yeah, I think just because yeah. of you know where the. Well, yeah, there's but, not a lot to take out of Edge of Tomorrow. It's just fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this yeah. is one of my favorite. It's still in my honorable mentions because it's a great sci-fi action movie. It's a fun movie, but so, but yeah, yeah, like Minority Report. There's a great emotional scene where he does finally meet the person that's alleged he's supposed to allegedly murder. It's a great scene. Oh yes, I don't want to say anything else oh, other man. than that. But that scene is incredible in terms yep. of acting and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's been uh, this episode of End Tournament Champion Podcast. Sorry if we went, we went so long. Uh, sci-fi is a topic that we're very passionate about. Uh, I talked a lot. Um, so uh, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Enter Tournament of Champions, and me. I'm on Twitter at Jeff Witty W I D D Y. Uh, that's the same name on Letterbox too, which I'm there all the time. Uh, Kyle is streaming on Sub Dash Culture. Well, and you write on Sub Dash Culture dot com. Yeah. Uh, sub underscore Culture to Twitch, right? Yeah, something that's like where that. you stream sometimes. That seems right. On Wednesdays, I believe. And uh, JD, yeah, is um, I, a person. I, actually, I don't have uh, time to list all the places I'm at because I have to pee really bad. So I'm okay, just gonna, let's just gonna move let's on. Listen while JD pees, everybody. Sweet. All shit. right, so uh, see you guys <laughs> later at Skirpadoo.